Some people are asking me how I made SSL certificates for my tutorial videos. So let me show you how to use Let's Encrypt to make free SSL certificates that you can practice with. And some people like to use these Let's Encrypt certificates for production usage as well. So right now I have this Ubuntu machine in the web somewhere at this IP address. And I've also resolved this domain name, serpbot-demo.evermite.net to this IP address. So this IP address is the same as this IP address. And this is important because later we will run a command to tell Let's Encrypt to generate a certificate for us. And at that time, Let's Encrypt will verify that the domain we've chosen, in this case, certbot-demo.evermite.net, actually belongs to the same server that we ran our command from. The other thing you need to do is make sure port 80 and maybe even port 443 is open while you are creating the certificate. So keep those things in mind when you create your certificates. And because this is a new instance of Ubuntu, I'm gonna update the distribution packages. Okay, so we'll let this run in the background. And now I'm gonna pull up the documentation for something called CertBot, which is the tool that we're gonna to use to generate our Let's Encrypt uh, SSL certificates. So here's the CertBot website, and we're gonna pick Other for Software and Ubuntu 20. If I can find it. Yeah, Ubuntu 20 for the OS. And CertBot is saying we need to install SnapD first. And once we've installed SnapD, then we use SnapD to install CertBot. And once we've installed CertBot, we can run this final command over here to generate our Let's Encrypt SSL. So I'll run through each of these steps as soon as Ubuntu is done updating. Okay, Ubuntu is up to date, so let's install snapd first. apt-get install-y snapd, all right. Now we use snap to install certbot, so let's say snap install hyphen hyphen classic certbot. And let's give it a moment. All right, that's good, so now we can generate our certificates. Okay, let's use our new certbot command. Certbot cert only hyphen hyphen stand alone. And this will download the certificates to our server. Let's type in an email address, agree to terms of service. Doesn't matter if you agree to the newsletter or not. And let's type in the domain name that we want our certificate for, which is certbot hyphen demo dot evermite dot net. And we'll wait a moment. Okay, so certbot failed. This is because I create the A record for certbot-demo.evermite.net only 10 minutes ago. And it could take up to 48 hours for the rest of the world to pick up on this change. So I'm gonna pause and come back in an hour to try again. Hopefully the DNS settings will have caught up and resolved my domain name by then. I decide to wait only about 15 minutes. So let me see if it works this time. And make sure you do have port 80 open and maybe even port 443 open while you're running these commands. You can always close those ports afterwards once you're done getting your certificates. All right, so we got the certificates this time. So you can go to the etc let's encrypt archive directory. And in here you should find your certificates, which you can move anywhere else if you need to. And the other place you should also look is this directory called the live directory. So let me go into here. So this live directory basically leaves these aliases or symbolic links to your actual certificates. These links are important because Let's Encrypt certificates usually expire in three months. And most people who use Let's Encrypt will set up a cron tab to automatically renew certificates every month or so. And during the renewal process, CertBot will download new certificates to the archive directory and increment the suffix of the file names. Then CertBot will update these links to point to the latest certificate file names. 
This means that if you have software that needs to use Let's Encrypt certificates, it is more convenient to reference the symbolic links in the live directory instead of the certificates in the archive directory. And in case you find it useful, here are two commands that you could potentially use to renew the Let's Encrypt SSL certificates on your server. You could either just use certbot renew, which will renew all the Let's Encrypt SSL certificates on your server, or you can run just certbot cert only hyphen D and then your domain name. And that will renew just the one SSL certificate associated with that particular domain name. Another important point is around file permissions. You have to make sure you choose permissions that are not too restrictive and not too permissive for your software to access. And that you'll just have to experiment on your own to see what works. Also, in most of my videos, I upload the certificates from the archive directory to whatever machine I'm working on. And then I reference them directly because it's easier for demonstration purposes. But you probably rarely do that in a production environment. So I thought I'd mention that. So the final thing we can do is review the content of our certificates to see if everything is in order. And you can do this with the open SSL tool, which comes with most distributions of Linux. If you don't have it, then just type app get install open SSL. But since I already have it, I'll just go ahead and use it. So I'll type open SSL x509 hyphen in, and then the name of our certificate file, which is fullchain.pm, hyphen text, hyphen no out. And these are the details of our certificate. And the first thing I like to look for is the validity date. So you can see here that this certificate will expire on May 21. And I should double check the common name or the domain name because things will generally break if there's any typing mistake in the domain name. The other thing we can test is whether OpenSSL can generate the correct public key using the private key and the certificate. So let's generate a public key using the private key first. So I'll type OpenSSL P key hyphen pub out hyphen in the file name for our private key pipe open SSL SHA-256, uh, press the enter, and there's our public key. So let's create the public key with a certificate. So I'll type open SSL x509 hyphen pub key, oh, whoops, pub key hyphen in the file name for our certificate hyphen no out pipe open SSL SHA-256, enter, and there's the public key. So you see that this public key is the same as this public key, which means our certificate is valid. So at this point, you're pretty much done. If you map your domain name to a different server, you can just secure copy the certificates to the other server. So I think that's it for now. If you found this video helpful, then just give us a like and you can subscribe to this channel if you want to stay on top of the videos as we release them.